Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw this ginger cat in pastels. So for parts of this tutorial you're going to see my hand move in here where I'm just explaining what I'm doing. That's because I have made this as a real time tutorial available on my Patreon channel. So I'm explaining what I'm doing, the pencils that I'm using and, and so on. So if that is of interest I'll link my Patreon channel in the description below. So like with all of the subjects that I draw I always start off with the eyes first. So I'm mapping in the basic colours and then I'm building up from there. With this, because I wanted my colour saturation and those lovely vibrant eyes to be the main focus of this portrait here, I put in my light vibrant colours to start with. This is something that I will do quite often when I'm trying to make sure that I keep the vibrancy in place with that certain element that I'm drawing. I'll then build my darker colours on top of that and my main aim with any eye that I'm drawing that I'm getting that 3D sphere effect and that's all in the lighting, making sure you've got your shadows and your highlights in the right place, keeping the shadows to the edges, especially that top edge to make sure as I've mentioned that you've got that 3D effect in place. So I am really sorry about my glasses that you can see in the corner there, my back was really angry and I was obviously leaning a bit too far forward so you just catch the side of that there, so I'm really sorry about that. But once I've done the, the eyes here I then started working on the pan pastel base layer. Now for this I had a little bit of a technical problem and my laptop and my camcorder, I don't know which one it was, decided to crash. I lost the pan pastel part of this tutorial but because I wanted to make sure obviously that I didn't leave that out, what I did, and you're going to see this in a couple of seconds, I re-sketched my cat the same size, I then redid the base layer stage so that I could re-record that, which is exactly what this bit is here, and then add that part to the tutorial. So it's all still in real time, it doesn't affect any Patreon members who are following along to this, but it just meant that I had to do this part twice. And also what I decided to do for this tutorial is have my piece of paper to the side of me so that my Patreon members can see the exact colours that I'm mixing at the time, obviously mention what colours I'm using at the time that I'm adding more, so that anybody that can follow along they can try to do that as closely as they can. Now I don't think that colour is 100% you know it's not the be all and end all, I want to focus on my contrast more than anything rather than the worrying about the exact colour, but I do know that colour selection can be quite tricky especially when using pan pastels. Now the one thing that I love about them is that they're very pigmented as you can see here from this base layer the oranges and the yellows are really quite strong but I loved that for this especially because obviously I wanted to really focus on that ginger colour. However I did learn sort of throughout this process how saturated these colours are. Now I do love them for that I have to say they it is one of the the biggest bonuses but it's one thing to be aware of that you only need a very small amount of some of the pigment because you can go the complete opposite way and make the layer far too bright. Not only can you make it too bright but it's very easy to then make that colour that you've mixed too dark so it's just something to be aware of. So that paper in the corner there at the side I thought was just a useful way for me to show how much pigment of each colour I was picking up at the time. So once I then did that base layer stage I carried on with my first effort here where I did the eyes first and then yeah as I say just carried on with the tutorial from here. So when I start working on the ginger fur what I like to do is work around the eyes first and then I build up the fur around it. Now this was the first pure ginger cat that I have drawn in pastels. I've drawn cats with ginger stripes but nothing quite like this. I wanted to make sure that I got that colour right from the very beginning. So my base layer stage and my layer of refinement, I was focusing on trying to get that colour, that bright colour saturation in place right from the beginning. I was then going to be able to build my details on top with very subtle layers, but the, the key to it was, was multiple layers. I didn't want to just start adding my details in at this stage, I wanted to make sure that I had that colour as close to that reference photo as I could and then build up my details with my lighter pencils to build up that depth within the fur. And even at this stage as you can see I'm starting to indicate at the direction of the fur, I want to start to give that feeling of that texture, where that fur starts to get a little bit longer, where underneath the eye it starts to get a bit shorter, especially on the bridge of the nose as well here, the fur is so short it almost looks like dots rather than actual pencil lines. And when it comes to the fur length, really study that reference photo, zoom into that photo if you need to, to really make sure that you are creating the right texture for that part of the animal. 
And the reason why I decided to do this as a real-time voiceover for Patreon is because this was one of the this reference photo actually got the most votes on my poll. So occasionally I like to do polls on Patreon so that Patreon members can select which photo they would like to feature in an upcoming tutorial. This ginger cat got the most votes and it was one of the ones where I got quite a lot of feedback saying it's one of the more challenging fur types that people find to capture. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss any part of this out, I didn't want to speed any part of this up, so I decided to do this all in real time. Also with cats that is quite different to dogs is that the fur on the top of the head, especially on the neck and the body, are, is quite a bit thicker. So it's got that softer appearance, that slightly more dense look. So I want to make sure that I really did capture that. Now all of that as you start to see here where I now start to build up my fur details is all in the layering. I'm not selecting my brightest pencils. Now one of the biggest things as well that you will you'll often hear and see online is that you shouldn't use yellow pencils for fur when you're trying to get sort of like maybe blonde hair or something like that, a yellow Labrador as well for instance. And yes, that's true for 99% of the time. I very rarely use this pencil here for anything related to that. However, with a orange base there like what I had here, the yellow actually worked really well. As you can see, it didn't actually look like a yellow pencil. Because I was using it on top of the orange base layer, it was just becoming a bit more of a lighter version of that layer. And that was exactly what I wanted. However, usually if you have got something like a yellow Labrador or as I say, blonde hair for a human portrait, you don't want to be usually typically using your yellow pencils. But there is always an exception to the rule. Just like with any subject that you are drawing, it's really important to pay close attention to that fur direction. You want to make sure that you've got those fur strokes curving in the right way in order to replicate that bone and muscular structure underneath the skin. And if we don't get the fur direction accurate, it's not going to then resemble that pet when the portrait is finished. And obviously, if you are working on pet portrait commissions, that's something that's really important. Now, regardless if you're taking commissions or not, the fur direction is something that we really want to pay attention to and get accurate. Because as I say, the end result will not look as much like that reference photo as, as you'd like. So when we're drawing fur, especially on cats where they've got that very short fur on the bridge of the nose, we want to make sure that we are focusing on a few different elements. We want to make sure that we've got the fur direction, as I've said, correct. That's really important. Also, the fur length is very important, but also the thickness of the pencil strokes. We need to make sure that we're getting these details, these finer lines, as fine as they should be in those areas. So for instance, on the bridge of the nose, we want those details to be very short, but also very fine. If we do make them too thick, we're just gonna really create a different texture on the bridge of the nose than what we need to get for an animal like this. And there are many things that can affect that, how sharp the pencil is, how much pressure you put on that pencil, how you hold that pencil, and all of these things are something that I do cover in depth. But one of the most common causes to why your details are not fine enough is because you are putting too much pressure on that pencil. You'll start to create more grainy effect, especially if you are using pastel matte, it will start to show up the, the tooth of the paper quite a lot more. So if you are finding that and your pencil details are too thick and you do want those finer lines, ease off on that pressure that you're putting on the pencil. You don't always have to have a very sharp point to the pencil. Here is a prime example. All of these pencils here that I'm using, aren't, they don't have a really, really sharp point. But how much pressure I'm putting on that pencil at the time is all helping to create these fine lines. And also the size of that portrait is something that should also be considered. So this was a six inch by six inch portrait. So it's not massive. It was just big enough for me to show my patron members how to layer for a cat of this color, how to get these kinds of details. But one of the biggest tips as well, if you wanna try and get more detail is to work larger. The more space you've got, the more room you do have to add all of these intricate details. The layering process would be exactly the same and the colours and the pencils that I use are exactly the same but it just means that you would have to lengthen your pencil strokes that much more to get that ratio for that increased size that you're working on. So now that we're coming on to the ears, something that I pay really close attention to is that light source. It's very important. Like your contrast, your highlights and your shadows, if you've got a light source and it's a good strong light source, be sure to make sure that you capture that in your portrait. So the light source on this cat is coming from the right hand side. The ear that I'm working on at the moment is darker than the one on the right. So I wanted to make sure that I captured that. 
I had to make sure that my base layers were dark enough here in order for my fine hair details to show up on top. And that's one of the most common questions that I'm asked here on YouTube is why aren't my details showing up on top of my base layers? And quite often the reason is that your base layers aren't dark enough. If you're finding that you feel you're using the right coloured pencil in the right value and it's the, it's the bright enough pencil that you're after but it's just not showing up, it's usually a good indication then that your base layers aren't dark enough. If you blend out those details and darken up your base layer, reapply those details, you'll find that they will show up that much clearer. And as always, the last thing that I add is the whiskers. It finishes off that portrait, but they do need to be left till the very end because they overlap everything else. Drawing in the whiskers is one of my favourite parts, so it is a bit tempting to draw them in too soon, but then you run the risk of having to draw around them if you haven't finished the fur underneath. So it's a really good habit to get into to leave those till the very end. So I really hope this tutorial was of use. Here's a photo of the finished drawing. And if you would like to watch the real time three and a half hour video of this over on Patreon, as I say, I will link that in the description below. I also have a Patreon library on my website where you can see all of the tutorials that are available over there. But if this video was of use, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. If you like the content that I'm uploading, then hit the subscribe and the bell button and I'll be uploading another video here to YouTube next week.